Hello everyone, Mike Silverman here. In this video, I'll show you how to connect two Node.js applications that are running inside a Kubernetes cluster. We're going to use both HTTP using Axios as well as a WebSocket connection just to show you that both of those can work to communicate between your pods. And we will not be using an ingress service because we want our pods to be able to talk to each other from inside the cluster and we're not worried about these pods necessarily being accessed from the outside. So to make a long story short, what I was stuck on is that we need to write the address like this for when we are connecting to our pod through a service. So this is my client application here that's trying to make a connection to a Node.js server and the address is written with three parts. We have the protocol at the front, the name of our service in the middle, and then our port at the end. And that should work. So if that's all you needed to know, uh, then take it easy. I'll see you next time. If you'd like a more in-depth explanation about what's going on here, then stick around for the rest of the video. So let's take a look over here at our Kubernetes cluster right now. And we've got our deployments here. We have our client, which is what we were just taking a look at. And we've got our server, which I call the zone node because uh, it is a zone in the application I'm making. That's meaningless, but uh, just know that this is the server that we are connecting with the client. Both of these deployments have one pod inside each of them, and we are using a service called the zone node cluster IP service to connect to the pods inside of this deployment. So if there was more than one pod here, this cluster IP service would pick randomly one of these pods inside using some sort of load balancing math or magic to figure out which one to connect it to. It'll just pick one and connect a connection that's incoming from somewhere else. In this case, our client Node.js application. And let's look at the YAML files here. So for our zone node deployment, we've only got one replica. As we saw, there's only one pod in there. And we are using the label zone node, which is going to allow our service to find this deployment. And we are saying that the application inside of these pods that we're specifying in the spec section here is going to be running on port 5001. And we are indeed running on port 5001 here uh, in our env file for this Node.js server. We're saying we want port 5001, or the environment variable equals 5001. And this is the port that we are running our express application on right down there. So that's well and good. We got our container port that matches up with our server inside these pods that we could make multiple replicas of, but in this case we just have one. So once again we've got our batch labels here of component zone nodes, so let's take a look at our service here that we're going to be using to help make our connection, and we see that our selector is selecting this label of component zone node, so that is how this service is going to find this deployment and the pods inside of it and send our connection requests along. Then down here on the ports, we have the port that we are exposing to connections uh, being made to this service. So this is the port that we are specifying here in our address when we make our connection. And then we are targeting 
port 5001, which is targeting an application inside here running on port 5001, which is once again this container port here and the port that the server is listening on. And it's a little bit confusing. They're all the same number, uh, but hopefully that makes sense. So let's take a look back at our zone node. And the first thing we're going to try is to connect to the zone node server using an, uh, an HTTP request. And to make that happen, we've got Express, and we're making a HTTP server. And we're going to say that for our Express app, if anyone ever gets makes a GET request here to just the root route, we're going to send them back hello from zone node. And that's pretty simple, just sending them some string if they make a request. And once again, our server is listening on port 5001 inside the container. So let's go over to our client and see how we're connecting. We've got Axios to help us make an HTTP request. We have a function called test Axios, and we're calling that function down here. And that's basically all we're doing right now until we get into the WebSocket stuff later on. So the function, it basically every three seconds is going to try to make a GET request to this address. And once again, the important thing with the address is we have the protocol in the front. We have the name of our service, which is this service right here. We named it inside the YAML file when we declared our cluster IP service here. And that is this service that we have inside our Kubernetes cluster. And then we say the port that we are trying to get on this service. And this port is our port right here. So if you had a different target port and a port, you would have to write this port. This is the one that's exposed in the service. And then once we've gotten back our response, we're just going to console log that response down here. And it should say hello from zone node, because that's what we're sending back. So what I have going on is uh, there's in, in the terminal, I have the scaffold development environment running. And scaffold is a handy tool that will watch for file changes, and then it can copy them into your running cluster uh, containers and kind of change them on the fly. And it doesn't even have to rebuild the image, so it's super convenient. So I'm just going to show you. I'll make it like a small change here. I'll just uh, delete this data thing here. And when I save it, it should restart those containers, and we'll see if it's all working. So there we go. We're trying Axios, and every three seconds we make a GET request, and then we console log the result. And it looks like our HTTP requests are working. So let's now try it with WebSockets. So we'll come back over to our server. And we're going to uncomment this WebSocket stuff. So we are requiring the WebSocket Node.js library. We're creating a new WebSocket server. And we're saying that whenever a connection is made to the server, we're just going to console log that a client connected. And then we're going to set up an event listener that whenever a message is sent from this socket, that we're just going to console log the data that is received in a string format. So we'll save that and we'll go over to our client node so we can make that WebSocket connection. And we'll comment out Axios for now and we'll uncomment our WebSocket stuff here. So what we have going on is a function and we're calling this function here at the bottom. And when we call the function, we pass in the WebSocket address. 
and it's very similar to what we had before. So once again, we have the name of our service, the same service that we're already using, and we're using the same port just like before with Axios. The only difference is we have changed the protocol at the beginning. So if we want to use WebSocket, we have to specify the WebSocket protocol in the beginning of our address. In our handle socket connection function, we get our address from right up here, and we create a new WebSocket on that address, and we make an event that says when the socket connection is open, sorry, we make an event listener, says when it's open. Uh, we'll just log that we connected to our zone node, and we ping the server. Every three seconds, we'll just use websocket.send and some text over down to that server, and then we will call ourselves every three seconds, just over and over, pinging the server. And then down here, we just have some error handling and what happens when the connection is closed. So I'm going to save this, and then we are going to go over to our scaffold development environment and take a look and see how it's going. OK, so you can see in the client node container, which is the red tagged console logs here, we say that we're pinging. And in our zone node, in the green tag, we see some text is appearing. And that's exactly what we were hoping would happen. So this took me quite a while to figure out, and uh, I'm still new to Kubernetes, and you, there could be better ways to do this stuff, but I just wanted to share with you how I got it working, because I was pretty excited, and I hope this helps somebody. So uh, keep at it, keep crushing, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Goodbye.